or I was I was a managing director for a company called Keep Me Booked, which were which was a, not a kind of a property management system channel manager um, based in the UK, um, but targeted at the traditional hospitality, which is B and B's, you know, hotels and whatnot. Um, that company was bought by House Strip, who were like a big. Um, Big back in the day, like an Airbnb competitor, they kind of came along around the same time, um, raised like $60 million, um, but just couldn't compete with Airbnb like over that time. Um, so uh, House Trip, um, within House Trip, we had been building this company called Keep Me Booked to try and make it more um, short-term rental focused. We kind of, I spent a lot of my time talking to our database of hosts at um, House Trip. You know, we had tens of thousands of hosts there. Um, they were still using... Google Sheets and Excel Sheets and Google Calendar to tr- manage their businesses. And as they were scaling, they were having loads of challenges. Um, so we were trying to build Keep Me Booked out to be um, focused on helping short-term rentals. Um, TripAdvisor came along and bought the two companies and weren't interested in um, keeping Keep Me Booked alive. Um, so myself and my two co-founders at Uplisting, um, you know, we'd spent, we'd actually spent about a year working like nonstop on building the software, doing loads of user experience testing and um, talking to hosts and customer, customer um, exploration, that kind of thing. Um, so we decided that we would um, just leave TripAdvisor and start up listing. What's up, everybody? My name's Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, and here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What is up, E? My brother, I am, I am out of it today. We just finished our 24-hour clubhouse. Um, last time we did podcasts before the 24 hours were over, which was probably smarter on our side. Uh, but super excited for our guest. Have a ton of stuff to kind of download. And actually, there was a great tip right at the end, which was a debriefing video. Um, so one, you're off nice and fresh from a podcast or an event or anything of that sort where you learn a lot and you have a team of other people that you want to kind of share it with just recording yourself doing literally a little debriefing and then you can send to your team. Uh, so super valuable uh, little tip there at the end. And I think I'm going to have to do that and kind of sit down and implement. Um, I remember when you and I went to the 10X GrowCon, we did that every night, right? We came home, no matter how late it was, we kind of sat down, brought our notebooks out and kind of go through everything um, because, again, as always, information and education is only potential power. Is just really what you do with it after that really can make a difference. Um, so I, got a, I know I've got a few pages of notes just like. Yeah, really crazy. Here, just so. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But it was good, man. I am, I'm very glad that we have this whole group of friends now uh, from all around the world. Um, and I'm just so excited for the industry, as I, as I always says, I, I really see it kind of growing and, and there are so many people coming into it. So many great technology, like our guests, right, there are, are coming in that I would have loved all this shit 10 years ago when I was running it off an Excel spreadsheet, um, taking direct booking on usually post-its, right? Like I would write people's credit card down on post-its, um, high level of security right there, but uh the business, the business has definitely changed. Um, so yeah. I love that, dude. I love that. I'm just scrolling through. So if you guys have been listening to the podcast, you know that we've got a new texting community set up so you can text your questions directly to us. So this goes directly to my phone. So you guys are going to definitely want to put this in your phone. The number to text is 978-321-6563. 978 978- Three, two, one, six, five, six, three. Uh, it's a really cool way for us to engage. So I'm just reviewing a bunch of the questions that came in, seeing if I can pull some up. I know some of you guys are sending me your listings that you want me to review. So I'll record some videos to do that. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any that are like quick ones that I can answer. A lot of people ask me 
Somebody asked me how to find capital. I heard you on Clubhouse tonight and I'm interested in how to find the capital to invest. Mm. So one, if you're asking how do you find investors, I'll give you something real quick before we get into this episode. So one, you got to know what the hell you're talking about before you go approach anybody for any money. Okay. There is a massive responsibility that you are taking on when you're leveraging other people's money. So first is you got to know what you're doing. So get educated, get a mentor, get a coach, go through some programs, understand the business, understand the market that you want to be in, the types of properties, make sure that you know what you're doing before you take on anybody else's money. Then you want to start with the people that are closest to you because to raise money, they're going to need to know, like, and trust you. So start with your inner circle first, your parents, your family, siblings, friends, uh, anybody that might be in the real estate space that you know is already an investor, somebody that maybe has worked with you in the past that you've had a good relationship with, they've seen you demonstrate success in other areas. Um, that would be who I would start out with first. I wouldn't just show up to local real estate meetups or investor meetups and just be like, hey, I got this deal. Who wants to invest? Um, it's not really the way you want to go. So step one, get educated, um, understand what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve. Number two, uh, start with your family, friends, uh, and inner circle first. That would be my two cents. E, I don't know if you want to throw anything on top of that. No, bro, that was, that was right on point. And, and understand that your investment in education and learning can be your sweat equity. And then obviously the other component of your sweat equity is the amount of time that you're going to put in it. Um, and, and the other thing that is super big for me, what I've learned over time with, with people, because now what's funny is that after 10 years of doing this, you have people that approach you kind of in a similar way, right? Like I have a deal, I have this. And, and I've come up with a very simple little, little strategy that kind of sorts out the majority of them is I just give them a couple of tasks to do. And yep. most of the time people don't do them, right? Hey, I have questions about, about short-term rentals. I'm like, okay, have you listened to the podcast? No, I'm like, okay, listen to the whole podcast and then come back to me. If yeah. they're serious, they come back. Most of the time people don't come back. So also really understanding that if you are trying to get started, follow up, follow up, follow up and getting really religious with that because anybody that you need, you need a real estate agent, follow up. You need investors, follow up contractors follow up right there is money in the follow-up no matter what aspect of the business you're in um, but that's a key component in actually raising money 100 percent, 100 percent. well thank you for that question rodney r i won't say your last name but uh thank you for texting me that question all right now i am excited to bring on our guest today who has been hanging and banging with us on this 24-hour clubhouse room and uh gotten the privilege to get to know him a little bit and uh, really excited to have him on. So today we've got Vince Breslin on with us. He is one of the founders of uplisting.io. Uplisting helps property managers manage, automate, and scale their business. Prior to uplisting, he ran a similar company focused more on traditional hospitality, which he sold to TripAdvisor. And he also worked for House Trip, which was an Airbnb competitor back in the day. So mm -hmm. welcome to the show, Mr. Breslin. How are we doing, man? Hey, folks. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm good. I'm a bit tired after this uh, Clubhouse <laughs> Marathon, but uh, I think I've got, I've got some more vocal cords left to talk a little bit. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. Well, why don't you kind of walk us back on how you got into the whole hospitality industry and then kind of bring us into what Uplisting is and, and, and what it does? Sure. Yeah. So, um, as you said, I worked for a, or I was, I was a managing director for a company called Keep Me Booked, which were, which was a, a kind of a property management system channel manager um, based in the UK, um, but targeted at the traditional hospitality, which is B and B's, you know, hotels and whatnot. Um, that company was bought by House Trip, who were like a big. Um, Big back in the day, like an Airbnb competitor, they kind of came along around the same time, um, raised like sixty million dollars, um, but just couldn't compete with Airbnb like over that time. Um, so uh, House Trip, um, within House Trip, we had been building this company called Keep Me Booked to try and make it more um, short-term rental focused. We kind of, I spent a lot of my time talking to our database of hosts at um, House Trip. You know, we had tens of thousands of hosts there, and um, they were still using 
Google Sheets and Excel Sheets and Google Calendar to manage their businesses. And as they were scaling, they were having loads of challenges. Um, so we were trying to build Keep Me Booked out to be um, focused on helping short-term rentals. Um, TripAdvisor came along and bought the two companies and weren't interested in um, keeping Keep Me Booked alive. Um, so myself and my two co-founders at Uplisting, um, you know, we'd spent, we'd actually spent about a year working like nonstop on building the software, doing loads of user experience testing and um, talking to hosts and customer, customer um, exploration, that kind of thing. Um, so we decided that we would um, just leave TripAdvisor and start Uplisting um, ourselves. So that's where Uplisting was born, um, focused entirely on short-term rentals. Um, that was, well, I think I started in this space about seven years ago. Uh, house, or, and Uplisting has been going for a few years now. We're self-funded, kind of grown slowly, um, but surely, um, working with our customers and um, building out like a, what we see as a really reliable and valuable platform. Mm. So yeah. have you, are you a host yourself? Have you ever hosted yourself? Yeah, yeah, we have a, we've, I, I've been on Airbnb again since like, you know, way back in the day. I never managed, you know, more than my own property, um, which is, I have a property in, in the UK in London. Um, so yeah, I have definitely been, been part of it. My parents run a guest house and I'm from Donegal in Ireland. And mm. my parents have had a guest. So I've kind of grown up in this, in, you know, in hospitality. They've had a, they've got like an 18 bed guest house there that, you know, we'd help out and, and all that kind of thing. Um, but my brother actually ran a, very big um, property management company in Scotland and Edinburgh. Um, they got to around 300 properties. So kind of having first-hand experience with him and obviously he uses our software. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think we have, we have a good handle on it. Well, for being Irish, your accent is quite understandable. I remember the first time I flew with Ryanair, <laughs> uh, there was a full-on Irish dude as a flight attendant. And yeah. knowing, I mean, I've, I've been flying my whole life, knowing what he was supposed to be saying, I still had no clue. Uh, what was going on uh, yeah. so what um what is your what would you say the competitive advantage because obviously there is a lot of pms systems out there yeah so yeah. what are you guys what is your unique ability that you guys have kind of come up with well I, I think there's a lot of I'm not going to diss any software. There's some great software out there. And, you know, it, a lot of property managers have their own unique needs. So we, we know that we can't suit everybody. That's totally fine. There's other software that can do that. Um, but um, there's also a lot of really terrible software out there that's, you know, built by somebody who might have a property management company and has built out their own software. And they then start to sell it. They realize that software is quite you know lucrative. Um, but... The, if you don't have the expertise in building it and you don't build it with a really reliable framework in, you know, in, in, the, in the back end, then um, it can be uh, you know, disastrous. So one of, our, one of our USBs is just reliability, like number one, reliability, no, no double bookings, no wrong prices, no confusing prices on booking.com, on Airbnb, whatever it is. Um, so one USB is, is, is reliability. And you'll see it in our customer reviews, like every day it is um, reliability. So once we have reliability, we then build on top of that. Um, so we have like, you know, features like automated guest messages, which a lot do obviously. Um, but what we try to do is build features that um, really meet the needs of growing property managers. So we build um, like uh, features like our cleaning scheduler. Um, we have guest identity verification built in. We have security deposit collection built in. We have a uh, booking direct booking website built in, which is really um, stunning, we think, and you know has high conversion rates. Um, so another USP for us is that we try and build as much as possible in-house. So you only need, you only need to use one platform. Um, and then secondly, like, or thirdly, um, a lot of software is really expensive. We believe that we should, you know, we, we, we don't believe in charging, charging you a commission. So we have a flat fee per property, um, which is another reason why we get a lot of customers coming from um, more expensive software. Mm. I love that. And I love that because I think that's the most important part of, of any assisting kind of business, right? And I, and I, being a real estate investor, I talk about this a lot with wholesalers. And wholesalers, a lot of the time, uh, when they're trying to get started, like, how do I become a good wholesaler? And it's like, I tell them all the time, you need to, you need to f fight for my profit. You need to understand exactly. what it is yeah. that I am, I'm looking for. So if yeah. you're, even if you're doing a service like you, right, you're technically building a SaaS, right? Is that what you call it? A SaaS? Yeah. 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 So I have a little brother that is all into this cloud stuff. So I'm mm -hmm. learning the lingo a little bit, but like by building 
the SaaS, but if you just build it to what you think it's cool and beautiful, which may undoubtedly be cool and beautiful, but then if Mike and I can't use it or the features are just beautiful, you're not going to survive very long. So I really appreciate that about you guys. Yeah. And we, we do like, I have like, we have four pillars that we've just focused on. Whenever we're building a feature, like, you know, you're, you're working in the software world. We have, I get feedback all day long, every day. And the secret to building good software is that you just, you, you say no to a lot of things. So you're like, we're not building that. It doesn't meet the needs of the majority of our customers, or it's just a, you know, sounds like a good idea, but whatever. Um, so a lot of it's down to like um, understanding where, you know, what the majority of our members want, where it goes, but based on our four pillars are, um, we want to make you more money. So how can we help you with revenue growth? Um, mm-hmm. We want to make sure your guests are satisfied. So it's like all about guest satisfaction. Um, we want to automate as much as possible. Like you guys are insane for wanting automation. Like it's, it's nuts. So everything we do is how can we automate that how can we make that smarter or just take that workload off you in a, in a you know a really smart way um and then the third one's just helping with you know, operations and um uh, you know helping your team basically that's, that's kind of what we what we judge everything on is like is it falling into one of those categories mm. i like that. that that's awesome and i see <clears throat> one thing that i really like that you guys implemented that i have not seen elsewhere is the guest verification yeah. Right. Like that, that is a really cool component that you guys have, have integrated right in there. So basically yeah. when the guest books, if I follow along, like I was just kind of checking out the website and some of the different mm-hmm. features. So when somebody books, whether it's direct booking or booking.com or Verbo, anywhere basically besides Airbnb, yeah, they'll get this page that pops up and they have to upload their, their license, sign the rental agreement and agree to the security deposit, like right there. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So what we provide is, uh, again, it's just like, how can we make this easy for somebody when you're thinking about, you know, this solution, like guest identity verification, or if it's security deposit collection or whatever it is, it has to be easy for the guests. Like that's, you know, really important. Um, so what we have is a, uh, like a booking confirmation page that every, every reservation on Uplisting has this, and you can enable modules or disable them as you need. Um, but every, the guest just clicks on one link and on that link, they'll see their summary of the reservation. Um, they'll see, okay, I need to upload my identity. So I just click a button and go through that process right there. I need to provide a security deposit. So I'll just enter my credit card information um, and I'll sign the rental agreement. Again, just all built in. And then all of that information is funneled back into the reservation on Uplisting. So you as a host can see that, okay, check, check, check. Um, those have all been completed. Um, and then we tie that into our like our automated messages as well. So if, if the guest hasn't paid a security deposit, then that blocks the check-in message going out. You know, those kind of things where when you can have it all in one platform, um, you can, you know, have real powerful automation around that, that there's no, um, you know, it's all, it's all just built in and just works really nicely together. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. Um, I know that this is a question that Mike really likes to ask um, when we bring on people that have kind of started a business like that. It's like, walk us through the journey, right? So like, I assume there was a moment to panic, maybe when they were like, okay, we don't need this part of the company anymore. So you and your buds were like, okay, what, what do we do now? So tell us, tell us what the journey has been for you. And I think you said that it's been all of like, you guys haven't raised any money, right? Like you have been 100% yeah. bootstrapping it. Yeah. Um, well, leaving TripAdvisor was pretty easy actually, because we all got paid out. So that was nice. So we, we oh, started nice. off with, you know, a bit of a cushion, which was, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, but before that whole experience, I, I, I've worked in startups, so I've raised, I have raised VC money for um, totally non-property related um, startup businesses. Um, and it, it wasn't something I wanted to do again, at least until a point that we reached like a real um, significant revenue with up this thing. So we didn't want to raise any VC money or take angel investment if we didn't have to um, because uh, your your hands are tied when you go so early with seed i think with the seed round where you're giving away 20 30 percent of your business like you're before you come to the point um where we are now a lot of a lot of companies have lost like over half of their you know business to 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 investment so we wanted to keep it keep it all in house um but we still built up this thing the first two years we had other jobs so it was all part-time i can I, i can see like um it's comparable to 
everybody or most people working in you know property management you, you typically started with a hustle as a side hustle you take, mm-hmm. get it off the ground um you know, make it some some form of some form of success and then go full time um so the fir- for the first two years of uplisting it was all part time we were working evenings weekends um started off with really simple kind of eye calendar functionality um uh, booking.com partnership and um and that um, but yes yeah, so that, that was kind of the start of our journey um, and then we we um took the leap and you know, went full time once we were comfortable and once the business was successful. Love that. And what is what does that team look like now? I mean, is he pretty lean, or do you guys have a lot of like? What's I'm not a tech you, guy, so I'm curious. Yeah, like personally, really, like really lean, really lean. Um, so myself, fortunately, when you're building software, like the most important thing I think to have, unless you have loads of money, the most important thing to have is. Um, uh, you know, high quality engineers. So my two co-founders are amazing engineers. They, they're like, they were senior engineers at Housetrip. Um, they could walk into any company on the planet and get a really good job. Um, so we're fortunate to have those. Um, so the team is primarily uh, my two co-founders who are all the technical side. One, one focuses on the back end and one does front end typically. Um, I do a lot of the kind of product development um design i talk to customers a lot so i get a lot of their feedback and i kind of keep my my hands in the pulse um, but we're totally remote we have software developers that are in austria bulgaria um slovenia uk um us um, then we have designers you know and we have uh, of course our support staff that are again all remote um and we have marketing team that are based in the us uk everywhere but we're, we're very lean we're not we're not a big team that's awesome yeah, I always love hearing those stories. So thank you. For yeah, right. That they're thing. so good. And they're always mm. so inspiring. And and you always think that the answer is going to be something different. But really, the answer is always the same. It's like you got to work your ass off. For yeah, totally. Years. Like, right. There is no way like there is no way to sugarcoat it. Like even yeah. unless, as you say, you start with a bunch of money. But to me, what happens a lot of the times, early, early people that raise money easily, early kind of ventures like that they ended up just kind of getting in the habit of just throwing money at things yeah that actually makes them less successful totally like what, one of the things i love about building software bootstrapping or you know self-funded whatever it is is the decision to put your effort into something to build a feature or whatever it is is you, do, you, you don't make it a whim like it has to be extremely important to build that feature which i think really helps to shape a product mm-hmm. yeah yeah, it makes sense. From your standpoint on kind of the user experience side, are you finding that a lot of your customers are like brand new hosts that have maybe just been on Airbnb and now they're really trying to take it to the next level? Or are you finding kind of like that mid market of like five to 30 units? And then you've kind of got that enterprise level that has hundreds of units. Like what, what do you find is kind of your sweet spot for folks? We, we don't tend to get the very brand new hosts. Um, we don't really necessarily want to get those people. Um, not for any, well, the reason we don't is because uh, it's, although I want to help people, you know, educate people and, you know, you know give them tips and tricks and help them along. Um, at the very early stages, it's not where my expertise lies. Um, so we have a price point where our minimum, our minimum um, price is a hundred dollars per month. And that's up to five properties, but um we want you. I don't want. We don't want people paying ten dollars a month to use the platform and just having one property. It just doesn't make sense for any of us, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also allows us to focus on these mid market um, property managers and, and help people grow. So somebody who wants to who sees themselves with 10, 20, 100 properties, that's that's who we're looking for. Um, and then it means that we ship our product entirely for these people, rather than somebody with one property who has very very different needs to somebody who's a growing property manager. Yeah. Love that. And so along those lines, what have you found? Cause you guys have a lot of features now and you've obviously continued to, to innovate. What have you found have been say like the top three features that you guys have that have really kind of changed the game for you guys and for the end users? Mm, so we, uh, we launched this cleaning scheduler, which is, which is um, not as advanced as properly. Like, you know, if you're comparing it to properly or turnover being be one of those, um, their, their, their functionality is much, much more advanced than us. And we have members who will also use that kind of software. Um, but we have, um, it works really well for a lot of people. So we have a cleaning scheduling software, which works really well. Um, our security deposit collection feature um, works really nicely. It is can be really complicated and hard to like chase people for money and, and all that kind of thing. Um, so we can be automated that and it doesn't matter if 
um, we already have the credit card information. So we, we get credit card information from Verbo, for example. Um, for, but from Booking.com, we don't, we don't necessarily get the credit card information. Um, so it doesn't matter what part of, you know, if we have the credentials or not, um, we, can, um, we have our whole system that automates the whole process of collecting it. Um, so that's been a big, big, um, big one. Our automated messaging is like, you know, very popular. Um, again, um, uh, you know, it's not as um, as advanced made, as advanced as the likes of Smart BNB, um, but for the vast majority, it's perfect. Uh, and then, more recently, um, last just before COVID hit, we released the uh, our direct booking engine, um, which we spent a lot of time on, um, and that has been like an ex- extremely popular feature. Um, we launched it in I think April last year, and I just good timing our, for that. <laughs> yeah, perfect timing. When but everybody just, wanted to get off the OT. <laughs> yeah, it was it was good. And looks, you know, it's a really nice feature. It's you can literally onboard to uplisting, click a button, and you can take a, a, you can take a direct booking. It works really nicely. Um, but we, I saw yesterday, I was doing our numbers, and we we just crossed like th- over three point three million dollars in direct bookings on uh, in that ten months through that booking engine. So I think that's been a real, mm. real big one. That's amazing. Your on your security deposit, uh, do you guys? when you say you handle it directly. So does that security deposit get charged and put into a separate account and then automatically withdrawn from that account to pay back the, the guest? It's it's via well it's via your Stripe account so we rely on Stripe for any Got payment it. processing, um, and yeah so we have like it's all three D secure you know SCA, um, ready um, transactions um, but yeah it goes onto your Stripe account and yeah. we have uh, if it's less than seven days and we do a pre office longer than seven days we do a full charge but we're changing that um, changing that soon so that we can try and repeat to uh, keep on repeating the pre off until a point where it fails and then we'll take the full charge so we'll be able to save our members a bit more money um, and uh-huh. yeah that's the way it works cool and uh, kind of piggybacking off of that question what are some of the of the things that you have in the pipeline that you guys are either really excited about or that you decided to do because you saw a lot of demand from the marketplace yeah so what we're working on at the moment is a integration with smart locks um insane demand for like it's just insane demand for this um we're integrating with uh, a company called edge data remote lock and um, so we can we can service like most locks with with that integration um so that's one thing i, I can that'll be releasing like next week or the week after so very much looking forward to that and then obviously provide those codes and the automated messages and allow you to um automate that whole process and another one that we've been working a lot on is a major upgrade to our automated mes- automated messaging platform itself. So it's um, much more customizable, much more tied into our features, uh, much more like kind of filters. So things like um, has uh, is the um, you know is what, what, what kind of filters we have like uh, the guest identity verification, the security deposit, like all of these kind of filters where you can make your own rules. Um, and I think those are the two biggest things that we're um, that we're that I'm that we're working on in the immediate future. Hmm. Awesome. But big, big undertaking. The automated messages in particular is just like a serious amount of work. So it's taking us quite a while. Yeah, I can imagine. I bet. I bet. What but, is, um, where do like, you see uplisting going? Like what, what's, what's the vision for you guys? So we, we're not like, we're not trying to be a guest. You know, trying to be that big. It's just not, not something we're interested in. Um, but what we do want to do is be much more and what we try and do currently is be much more than software. So it's not just a tool that you can use. We also want to provide like there's feedback. So we want to um, automatically provide pe- feedback based on um, your direct booking engine, for example. If you change this, then you'll get more, you'll get more conversions, um, adding automation into um, repeat booking. So part of our automated message upgrade is that we're going to be allowing you to do marketing within Uplisting. So you can you know, automatically target past guests um, on their anniversary of their stay or like six months before their stay. Um, mm. just all, all of these things just running in the background, you just flip a switch and it just works. Like that's what the vision of up this thing is. So, you know, a lot of that, um, you know, doing a lot of thinking around how we can help you, um, without you having to like interface with it whatsoever. Nice. I love, I love that, that CRM aspect of it. Cause I don't, I don't feel like anybody that I've come across has really gotten that dialed in at all. No, and it doesn't have to be too, com- I don't think it has to be too complicated. You know, it is really a, six, seven, eight different email types maybe or whatever it is. And um, we'll provide the templates and that will run off in the background. And, you know, your, your guests will just start getting these messages and you don't even have to do anything. And obviously we already have the guest information and all the new ones come in. So it's all, all automated. I, I love that it's going to run on without you having to do anything. 
part of it. Yeah. Really well, understanding. And that's how I know you know you know your hosts, right? Because even in the in the verbiage that you're using, mm-hmm. I know I'm intrigued because I'm like, that sounds awesome. That means there is because that is something else that I know in the back of my head that I need to implement and start mm-hmm. doing. But it's it's again, it's another thing that I need to start doing, implementing, finding exactly how to do it and everything else. Yeah. So there's such a huge advantage for me to be like, oh my God, you guys would do this already yeah. without me having to do anything. So that's brilliant. Yeah. I, one thing, like you asked the question around what kind of hosts we have, are they early stage or, or mid market, whatever it is. Um, they're, you know, even though they're, these, these guys have been in business for two, three, four, 10 years, they're still don't know everything. You know, there, there's, there is automation and advice and implementations that we can provide to you um, that you will not know about before. And you, you know, unless you're, you know, the, the biggest expert in the field, you're not going to get it. Um, so I think there's so much room for us to provide these, at least a baseline that you can then go, okay, that works really well. Now, what can I do on top of that? Um, mm-hmm. And you know, that kind of thing. It sounded like it was almost like split testing too for like conversions on your website. Like if you tweak this. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, there's, yeah there's so much scope around there that we can we can help with. Uh, and also, you know, show what what's the conversion of... Um, another website that we provide and this is this is the benchmark so if this is what you're getting then you're doing something wrong so look at this one and see what you can do better mm. mm-hmm. i like that um what and i mean it it kind of feels like covid this is no longer a thing but it's still very much a thing um so what are you guys kind of seeing on on that side so like increase in bookings also i think it was great time for you guys to open that uh option with the direct booking site when you did yeah. Um, but what, what can you speak in a sense of like, what is the trend? Like, where are things going? How do you feel about the industry? Well, I can speak from our, you know, members, subscribers, new customers. They can give a bit of insight into that might be not, might be a bit different to what you might normally get. Um, so we COVID hit, um, we had like, um, we immediately just gave out discounts to our members because, you know, it was terrible time. So we, we, uh, we, anybody who was really struggling, we just gave like half price for, three, six months, whatever they needed. Um, so it was slow, like last year, middle of last year was really slow. Um, but the towards the end of last year, like October, November, December, we had our biggest growth ever. Um, we, we never experienced when we did not expect that whatsoever. Um, and a lot of those members were US based, Australian based. Um, they were people that were just outside of cities. So we had a lot of urban customers beforehand um, but seeing people like in the Poconos of you know Pennsylvania or upstate New York or whatever it was or in middle of Texas um, that's who we were seeing um, coming into the market into using uplisting and from what we understand the re- one of the reasons is that they're looking to um, multi-channel so you know th- these people might have relied on Airbnb entirely last year and after the cancellation policies and whatever else they're now looking to branch out so we've a a lot of growth um with that um seeing i think verbo are going to do really well over the next few years just looking seeing seeing them from a technical perspective and what they're doing building upon um i think that there's going to be a lot of scope for verbo to be um, much bigger in the market and we'll see if that comes through or not but um just seeing seeing what we're seeing um so yeah like lots of growth um unexpected after a terrible year Hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's well, great news. I want to be uh, I want to be respectful of your time. I know uh, we've been going for a little bit here, but um, before we get into the last question, I want to you know I'll first acknowledge you for all the work that you've done. You know, to support hosts like us in this industry and constantly try and help innovate and give us new tools to make our lives easier and provide a better guest experience. So I want to acknowledge you for that and say thank you. And then the second thing is, is where can folks learn more about you, connect with you, learn more about uplisting? Uh, yeah, so go to, um, we have a Facebook community. So go to, um, just search for uplisting community and you, you can you can come on board and see, um, you know, before you sign up, even if, if you just want to have a look around, um, join us there or follow us on Instagram or Twitter and we're following me on Twitter. My handle is at Breslin, B-R-E-S-L-I-N or sign up to Uplisting on, uh, at uplisting.io um, and have a chat with us in the little chat widget. Um, I try to be um, available as much as possible to talk to people. And I, I work really closely with a lot of our larger customers. So we have like a really good, you know, a nice relationship. Um, so yeah, come over and we're, we're, we're open to talking and helping. I love that. I love that. And uh, the last question that we like to ask all of our guests is what is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? 
Number one secret to success. I'll talk from a, let me see. You can almost Not answer from, it two ways, from a developer side and then from a host side. <laughs> yeah. From what you've seen from your host. I think like not being too much in the, hmm. no, I won't say that. What do I say? So I, I'll talk from a software perspective at least because I, I don't think I can talk from an operator perspective and I, don't, I wouldn't be giving as good advice as somebody else would be giving. Um, but people who, if you're looking, so if you're looking for a solution, a software solution, whether it's uplisting or someone else, some other platform, um, take the time to talk to the developers. There's a lot of the solutions out there are, there, there's no like number one solution. And we have, we see this all the time where somebody will come to uplisting, they'll leave, they'll bounce around five, six different platforms, and then they'll come back to uplisting. And because then they're like, because this is the best, well, this is for their needs, at least, that was the, you know, the best number one solution was with, with the, the one they first started with. Um, so if you're looking for software, give it a go, stick with it until it becomes a point where it's just not working for you or, or becomes really unreliable. But I would, um, don't be one of those people who just jumps around uh, <laughs> every different solution because I don't think it works out in the end. Mm. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's actually great advice. I think it's a very common thing that we do as entrepreneurs is, is we don't truly give it the time and we're yeah. so much like this needs to work. And a lot of the times I know speaking myself personally, I know Mike is not as bad as this as I am, but I don't, I kind of, I buy a Ferrari and then I use it to go grocery shopping. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> this thing is a piece of shit has no space. And I was like, yeah, that wasn't, you didn't buy this for that. And I'm like, Oh, that's why, yeah. right? And really yeah. understanding that if you're not good, a good implementer, um, having people on your team that can take the time, do the training, because I'm sure you guys offer a ton of training and mm -hmm. really optimize the system before you be, you, you're, you're like, okay, this does or does not work. Yeah. With Opt so if you're an Opt thing and you ask, you, you have a set of needs, ask us what you need. And I will tell you honestly whether it works or not. And you, I, I'll give you advice of where else to go because we, we know that it's not going to suit everybody. I'd rather not have you on up this thing if it's not going to be um, the, the most optimal solution for you because you're unhappy. Um, we're not getting, you know, you're going to give us bad reviews, whatever it is. So I think just um, ask up front. Yeah. And that's one thing, just like your energy and your vibe, you're just a very authentic person. And I think that's why you've had the success you've had and why you're going to continue to amplify that success because people could smell through the bullshit these days. Oh, totally. Right? Totally. And, totally. and you're just a genuine dude. Who's like, listen, I've built this product I'm really proud of it. I've gotten a lot of feedback. It's not for everybody, but I'll tell you if I think it's going to solve your problem. And if I don't, then I'll try and help you find another solution. Like, that's just yeah. good business, good karma in general. Exactly. Yeah. That's just my philosophy in life. I think mm -hmm. yeah. don't push it. I love that. Well, thank you again for coming on here, man. Truly, truly pleasure, appreciate yeah. you. And uh, we'll definitely be in touch. Um, guys, make sure to check out Uplisting. Uh, make sure to follow us on Clubhouse. I'm sure we'll be doing more Clubhouse rooms. I don't know yeah. if I got another one of these 24-hour <laughs> ones in me. Not though, this man. week. I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> mm. So thank you but again. So and uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao, All right, guys. folks. Take care. Lovely, lovely weekend. Bye-bye. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.